Wisconsin and both New Hampshire and Iowa. A big lead, as a matter of fact. In New Hampshire, Bernie Sanders is leading Hillary Clinton by more than 20 points. That's uh, 52 to 30 percent in New Hampshire. In Iowa, he's leading her by 10 points, 43 to 33. Her campaign literally is collapsing. We saw that, that uh, the backdrop of the stage there waiting for her to come on. <laughs> we saw that fall over this last week. That, that was a wonderful metaphor for what's going on. And it's encouraging to see that there is a, uh, a blowback against the corruption, against the lies that we've seen from the Clintons for a very long time. This whole idea that she thinks that she is above national security. National security has been the the cover for everything criminal that the government does and yet here's somebody who violates every tenant of national security with her private email servers and she's given it a pass here's what's interesting about the same number of people support hillary clinton that support a military coup what does that tell us we've got some problems in america we'll be right back alex jones is going to be joining us in the next segment with a special report about a crazy feminist who wants to put all men in a concentration camp and hopes to end heterosexuality. Now, of course, we could just dismiss this as her incredible delusions, but there is a widespread movement throughout academia to sell this and has been for many decades. It is part of the suicide of the West. We see this unfolding with the open borders that they cannot bring themselves to oppose because they don't want to be uh, accused of being xenophobic or racist they're being told that we have white and European privilege, but that other people have rights. Think about that for a moment. You understand when we use those two terms, when we talk about privilege, when we talk about rights, you understand, of course, that rights are something that you fundamentally possess, but a privilege as, as your nature as a human being. That's why we had the Declaration of Independence talking about these rights that we get by nature of us being human. But when we talk about privilege, we're talking about licenses and special things that are given to us by a government or someone who grants this privilege to us. And that, of course, can be taken away at any time for any reason. You don't have a right to move around in this country. We're told we're told that our driver's licenses are a privilege. Didn't used to be that way. My father was driving when he was eight years old. As soon as he could reach the pedals... Uh, my, my grandfather gave him the keys to the car. And it used to be, in America, you didn't have to have a passport across the borders into a country. You didn't have to have the permission of your masters to move around within the country or across the borders. But now you do. Because now everything is a privilege that is granted to us. We don't have fundamental rights unless you're from outside of the country. If you're somebody that the government prefers, then they give them rights, but you still get the privileges. So we need to understand where this is all coming from. Another couple of uh, articles that are up on InfoWars.com that I think are very telling. Drone policing in the U.S. is seen as, quote unquote, the Wild West. That's what the ACLU calls it. They say interconnected drones could enable mass tracking of vehicles and people in wide areas. Oh, of course they could. That's precisely one of the reasons why they're doing it. There is a massive amount of really high power drones that are being used uh, by the Bureau of Land Management, the beloved BLM, the people who stole the tried to steal the land from the Bundys, the Cowboys. They went out and they were successful to uh, stealing the land from the Indians uh, with John McCain in Arizona, trying to take land from the miners, trying to overturn uh, li uh, mining agreements and property rights that have been in existence since the 1860s, 1850s in many cases. That same agency is mapping out uh, vast areas of the West with these drones. And of course, it isn't just because they're taking inventory of what they perceive to be theirs and they will make it theirs. This is also part of population control. They want to know everything that you're doing. And along those lines, we reported on Friday about the digital pill. Remember, it was on the Drudge Report, the pill that they can monitor and understand if you have, they can, they can track it to make sure that you're taking your medication. You know, the nurse ratchet thing, you know, medication time, medication. Have you taken your medication? You know, you're not going to be able to slip it under your tongue and then spit it out. They're going to monitor it with this digital device. Now, there's another article that came out today from uh, 
this is from Popular Science, embedded 3D barcodes to ensure that the pills are real. So we need to make sure that the pills are authentic. We need to make sure that you have taken your pills. What's going on with this? Being suspicious as I am of people in government, I would say that when we look at mandatory insurance, which is unconstitutional, there's nothing in the Constitution that gives the federal government any power to mandate insurance, to define what level of insurance we have to buy from the crony capitalists that have donated to Obama and to Mitt Romney. But they mandated our insurance. They're removing our informed consent when it comes to vaccines. They need to have something electronic because, you know, you, you can shoot the vaccine in. That somebody else does that to you so they can know. They can check off the mark that they have shot that into you. But if they give you a bunch of pills and they want you to take that on a daily basis, they have to have some way to make sure that if they're mandating medication for you, that you're taking it. And, of course, to be able to inventory it to make sure that it's genuine and not a counterfeit pill as well. And, of course, I understand the genuine concerns. I understand that there's massive problems with, with everything being counterfeited in China. That's part of the, the China price. That's something that China has been doing for a very long time that gives them a, an economic advantage over other people. And that is counterfeiting. And that's a real danger. When they make things in China, then, of course... Some criminal people in China can take that same packaging, and they do do this, that same packaging and make fake products. We've seen situations like disc brakes that weren't made out of brake material or they were made out of paper. And then people put them in their brakes. They can't tell the difference. Their their car, their truck crashes, and, and they bought this from uh, an American company, and the packaging all looked authentic, and yet it was it was a counterfeit. It was garbage. And so not only are the American companies or the other companies that are manufacturing this stuff in China and getting ripped off of that, not only are they losing the sale of this, people think they're buying something authentic and they aren't, they're then facing liability issues. So I understand that Big Pharma wants to make sure that people aren't counterfeiting their pills. Nevertheless, when we see embedded 3D barcodes to ensure that pills are real, when we see patents to make sure that we've got digital pills to know whether or not we're taking our medications. And if they hadn't been throwing informed consent under the bus so heavily for the last year, then I wouldn't be so suspicious. But when we see a government that no longer believes that you are a human being who should make your own decisions about your health care and about the health care of your family, I find it very troubling to see all of these types of controls being put on pills. Now, I want to get back to what we were talking about, some of our, our main thrusts here. We were talking about the uh, massive uh, immigration that's coming in in the West. I've mentioned several times about the uh, poll. It says many people are supporting a, uh, would support a military coup, coup about 29% of the people in the United States. We have an article up on Infowars.com. Psychopaths are running the world. A former U.S. Marine blows a whistle on a Syrian false flag, and he exposes the real agenda. And he did this a couple of years ago. I want to play you a clip from what he said a couple of years ago, because this guy lays it out for you. What's going on with this? First off, all of these players, these politicians, are nothing more than puppets. They don't serve the people. There is no real democracy. They really serve the rich and powerful who run the world, and that would be the bankers who control the money supply. The bankers, of course, make huge amounts of money. Whether they make bad investments or not, wars are great for them, and ultimately they control the politicians, and that is why we, we see these policies. Obama and Cameron are nothing more than puppets who read the script, and the script is, we need another war. And the reason why we need another war, according to these psychopaths who are running the world, is because more and more people, despite the clueless masses who continue to be entranced by things so ridiculous as X Factor and American Idol, there is larger numbers of, of people around the world who are realizing the truth and beginning to recapture the capacity to think for themselves. And they can see that these people who are being put in positions of public trust are defying that trust and representing an agenda which they could never speak about openly because they're nothing more than prostitutes and nothing more than minions for the powers that be very well said and of course as a former marine ken o'keefe uh he is now an expatriate he uh, is now a citizen of other countries because he's so concerned about what's going on in america and as he points out uh, in further remarks he says we don't operate under law we have a law of the jungle in which the rich and powerful basically determine what goes and what doesn't go. And that's what we're seeing happening here. He says the so-called war on terror is nothing more than a well-planned strategy to be in a perpetual state of war. 
to destabilize the region for the greater Israel plan, precisely. And of course, for Saudi Arabia as well. It is the Saudi-Israeli axis that is running this. It's not the Syrians and Iranians that I believe pose the greatest threat to us. They're not the ones, or to the region, certainly they're not the ones who are fomenting war. It is the United States and our allies who are escalating things. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Alex Jones back breaking down some of the latest news and developments. Paul Watson has an article and a video up on Infowars.com titled, Top Feminist Says Put All Men in Concentration Camps. Journalist also hopes heterosexuality doesn't survive and is inherently a bad institution. That's what I've explained here. I'm not against or I don't hate people who have other sexual preferences. Quite frankly, I'm not obsessed with it. I think it's a football issue. But the larger situation behind it is not just bread and circus, not just a distractionary political issue from other bigger issues. It's the fact that, as we cover in my film, In Game 1.5, uh, an online update, the university papers are clear from the 60s, the plan to not just get women all in the workforce or the state raises the kids, but to then start breaking up the family itself. And if you're able to do that, it's game over. And this lady... In multiple articles that Watson quotes and in other statements says, hey, I'm serious. Men need to be put in re-education camps. Heterosexuality is bad, period. Men are bad. I hate men. And you can go read her quotes, and this is probably one of the top ten so-called feminists out there. And if you look at these top feminists, they're all the same, just power-crazed weirdos that look like men themselves. And so I guess she needs to be the first person to put herself in a re-education camp. But this is the state and social engineers getting in between not the oldest human institution, the oldest institution of life is reproduction between male and female. Whether it's insects or fish or amphibians or mammals or marsupials. It's not sexist that the duckbill platypus is male or female. It's not bad that I breathe oxygen and exhale carbon dioxide. Uh, it's not bad the sky is blue. These people literally are the biggest con artist on earth, in my view, because they triple and quadruple down and just say, we're going to tell you how to talk. No more he, she, no more man, woman, no more husband, wife, because it hurts people's feelings. We're going to tell you no more... Uh, sports in schools, no, no more contact, no more tag, no more dodgeball, no more competition because that hurts somebody's feelings and somebody loses. These people are scientifically creating a culture of jellyfish that can be overwritten and destroyed. And once the family, the basis of the nucleus to set up a camp, to set up an operation, you know, a good camp of gardens, and farming and machine shops and working with others. Once that human basic building block has been destroyed, the globalists have taken over. And I've said this hundreds of times, I'll say it again. If I was an alien species studying the planet Earth from afar, like looking at microbes under a Petri dish through a microscope, this is exactly how I'd take down the planet, how I'd take down humans. And I would also come in with genetically engineered plants so that plants wouldn't reproduce anymore. I would come in and fundamentally change the atmosphere with the chemtrailing, with the geoengineering. I would fundamentally do what we see happening. And the truth is, I don't believe it's space aliens carrying this out, but it's humans that are psychopathic, served by sociopaths who hate goodness and hate the basic order of the world and want to play God. And that's what they're doing. They destroy the environment with glyphosate and GMO and then tell us carbon dioxide that plants breathe is bad. Uh, and we've all got to be tracked and taxed because we're all guilty. Uh, they radicalize Islam, bring it into the West to rape, kill, and murder, and then arrest anybody protesting against it. Again, it is an upside-down reality. And these people know they're totalitarians. They know they're hateful. They know it's social engineering. I've read their textbooks. I've read their writings. I mean, I remember 15 years ago, 16 years ago, being mailed a copy of the major textbook used for social services in college. And I showed it on air, and people didn't believe it. And it said, the family belongs to the Dark Ages. The family belongs to prehistoric times. I mean, I'm quoting it exact because I've quoted it so many times. 
dark ages, prehistoric times before that. Uh, it must be eradicated. So when Melissa Harris Perry gets up on MSNBC in a promo and says, we got to get over the idea that your kids belong.